الى ربك راضية مرضية فادخلي في عبادي وادخلي جنتي that O oh, satisfied soul return back to me enter into the paradise and be satisfied اقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله ربي من كل ذنب ما توب اليه and jazak Allah brother Abdul Shakur uh, he was talking about the two eyes you know which is very very much favorite to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so now I'm introducing another eyes you know which is uh, very very great eyes for our center uh, his name is brother <coughs> brother Hamza Malik he has been doing this Islamic job training and propagation from last 17 years He's a scholar, he's also a director of this center and with his very heavy schedules, you know, Alhamdulillah, he's taking these classes, taking pain for us, for Islam, you know, may Allah give us a best reward. You know. As you know that, in previously he also went to South Africa to visit the center and uh, get a training and education by the uh, our brother Ahmad Didak and I tell you one surprising thing when he went there as a freshman on the first day when they heard him his knowledge you know they were surprised Bra brother is well qualified why you are here you know <laughs> Alhamdulillah you know so and then in spite of his uh, well educated in, in uh, you know in comparative study he went there and he attained the classes and uh, and get the experience of the other brother brother Ahmad Didak. now with his hard work with the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we succeeded and inshallah you will get the diplomas today for this completion and inshallah in future we will do the same classes by the help of Allah and by his strong uh, belief and his, his strong work. Now I call brother uh, Hamza, please come and guide us and tell some new things so we can inspire our souls. Brother <laughs> Hamza Malik. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Muslim Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in Qala Allah Ta'ala fi al-Quran al-Kareem A'udhu billahi minash shaitan al-Rajim Bismillahi rahman al-Rahim Udu ila sabili rabbika bil hikmah Wa ma'al idatil hasanat Wa jadilhum billati hiya ahsan Inna rabbaka huwa a'lamu bil بمن ضال عن سبيله وهو أعلم بالمتدين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I'm reminded at this point of a proverb or a saying that was said by one great individual in Christianity here in the United States of America and also a great uh, uh, leader in the struggle for civil rights and human rights and that is the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and he said on one occasion when being introduced uh, he gave the uh, comparison of an old lady an old lady who had heard rumors that she was getting married an old lady maybe 80 90 years old and she had the rumor had gone around that she was getting married and so when she was in court asked about this situation, she said that no, she was not getting married, but thank God for the rumors. So <laughs> I say the same thing. My brother here mentioned me as a scholar. And uh, although I'm far from being a scholar, uh, I say I thank Allah for the rumor. 
verses in Quran concerning this issue in, in the 53rd Surah of Quran, uh, verses 2 through 4. Your companion errors not, nor does he deviate, nor does he speak of his own desire. It is naught but a revelation that is revealed. A revelation that is revealed. So the pivot points that we speak about, the oneness of God, Allah has put it forth in Quran very clear, and the Bible bears witness to the oneness of God in the essence. When we look through all the cloudy, mercury uh, situations that they have produced, we see it laying right there crystal clear. And when we speak about the nature of revelation and its case, we find that it's there also. That Allah has revealed the Quran to mankind and that Moses uh, and Jesus, they all spoke based on revelation, what they got from God, and it was prophesied that one would come bringing revelation from God also. And again, if we think this is a light matter, I just brought, and I've shown these things before, some of our Christian brethren, and many of them, are engaged in this warfare, warfare, active warfare, and they have produced pamphlets like this here, uh, Outreach to Islam, Outreach to Islam. This is geared towards our Muslim brothers and sisters, geared towards our Muslim brothers and sisters, Outreach to Islam. How to respond to Islam. I didn't write these booklets. No Muslim wrote these booklets. These are written by our Christian brothers and sisters. How to respond to Islam. They're training themselves and others how to respond to Islam. Islam has some, some great curiosity for, curiosity for them. You see, it's posing some situation for them that now they have to find out how to respond, how to deal with, how to outreach to these Muslims because they're the ones that's causing us the problem. They're the ones who have this unique concept of Tawheed. They're the ones who have this discipline. They're the ones who have this revelation from God that's unadulterated. They're the ones who are actively engaged in propagating their religion and so forth. They're the ones that's going to cause our downfall if we don't intercede, intercept that activity. Okay? Christian witnesses among Muslims in Liberia. Christian witness, witnessing among Muslims. Okay? Preaching or uh, reaching Muslims today. Reaching Muslims today. North Africa. How to reach the Muslims today. Islam and Christian witnesses. Ten Muslims meet Christ. Ten Muslims meet Christ. These are Muslims who they say have reverted or converted to Christianity. Ten. And we know the Jehovah Witnesses, how engaged, how actively they are engaged in propagating their religion. Okay? They have this booklet called Reasoning from the Scriptures. And in it, they have a training course of what to say when someone says that he is or she is a Muslim. What should you, how should, how should be your response when someone says that he or she is a Muslim? And they have a statement in here that says, if they make strong as, uh, assertion, assertions concerning their beliefs, it can be beneficial to ask them tact tactfully to show you the point in the Quran. If they make some assertion, ask them tactfully to show it to you from the Quran. This is what they're training themselves to do. Show me from the Quran. Like Allah says, produce your evidence. Okay? And wait. And while they're searching for it, you know, wait. Because now you've got to go look for it. They feel that you're not skilled, you're not trained. You said something. Show me from the Quran. You got all these thousands of verses of Quran, so now while you're looking, well, let me see, because they want to do this. It's a tactic, you see? So while you're doing that, they says, wait while they search for it. When they, ha when they, they are unable to find it, uh, some give evidence of greater willingness to listen to what you have to say about the Bible, okay? Now, when they're not able to find it, well, I can't find it right now, you know. Now, you be quiet and listen to what I'm saying. Okay, now those weak ones, they feel, feel, will be able now to shut up and listen to what you're saying. Okay? This is a tactic of theirs. And they have produced this, bo this book here, the Jehovah Witnesses, in green and white because it looks like our literature. You know, look at the colors that they're using, you know. 
This is like the Muslim literature, you know, green and white. We like these colors. So these are eat, catch the eye very easy, you know, for Muslims. The time for true submission to God, not the phony stuff you're talking about, Muslims. You know, submission, Muslim means to submit. Islam means to submit. Muslim is one who submits. Well, it's time for true submission now, not what you've been doing. This is their stuff. They're quoting plenty of Quran in here. Plenty of Quran out of context, of course, in here. And they're training themselves day and night, day and night to do this. So they have these things in their pouches. When you see these Jehovah Witnesses at the subway station, 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock in the morning, and, and at your door every day, they have this gear here, and they're trained. So maybe you and I, who feel we know a little something about Islam, we don't feel threatened, but there are many brothers and sisters who are a little shaky, a little weak in their faith, and weak in their knowledge and understanding, and this is all over the world. The Jehovah's Witnesses are not here only. They're all over the world. So they knock at these people's doors. And they have dealt with things like this here. Our Father who art in heaven, the Lord's Prayer. But now they begin to do it in Arabic, you see, to trick you, you see, to trick you. So you go to the store and you pick up one of these works of calligraphy and you want to bring it and plaster it on your wall, you see. And these are verses from the Bible. Biblical verses that they have here. So our children who begin to read these things and reading about the loving God in heaven, the Father and the Son and all this business here, and they see it in Arabic and they think it's something that they should learn. And finally, to show that it can happen to anybody, that anybody could be snared, this is a brother from South Africa who's the Hafiz of Quran. Hafiz of Quran spent his life, his family, evidently a good Muslim family because they raised him up to be Hafiz of Quran. You don't just do that in every day. But yet, somehow or another, he didn't have enough Iman with the learning that he had, or whatever the case was, that now he has been born again. He's a born again Christian. He's a born again Christian. Okay? Born in 1958 in, in a Muslim home in Johannesburg, studied the Quran, became Hafiz in 1976, became a born-again Christian in 1979. Born again. Hafiz of Quran. So for those of us who think that, you know, we don't have to worry, we don't have to worry about our children uh, being snared by these people, these Christians in society, well, we better think again. So this is why we have here at the Islamic Propagation Center International here, we have established these courses in comparative religion to begin to train ourselves in another discipline to be able to not only wait for them to come to us but to go out and meet these adversaries on common ground. So we want to go out after them now. We're going looking for them. We're not going to sit back and wait for them to come and knock at our doors. We want to train ourselves so that in every block, in every other household, there's someone trained to know this science of comparative study. So when they knock on the door, they'll have to run like roaches when you cut the light on, you know? And then eventually there's no place to run and they're all out in the open, you see? And they can be clobbered in that manner. Now, I said again that we want to use wisdom. We want to use the best example. But at the same time, there's necessary, it's times the necessary to do a clobbering job, you see? And when it's necessary to do that, we want to do that too. So I don't want to take up too much of your time because eventually when I start talking, you know, I start lecturing and going into this training pro <laughs> type thing. <laughs> so I don't want to do that. But and I'd like to not end this uh, talk of mine without uh, giving my thanks. Uh, first of all, I thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for having uh, given me the ability to pursue this, this uh, method of uh, study and having enlightened me somewhat and at the same time giving me the zeal and the vigor and the determination to go further with the study. And I'd like to thank also the staff here at uh, Masjid al-Fatima and Brother Akil Khan in particular uh, of uh, Islamic Propagation Center International for having given me this opportunity to come and have this interchange or uh, exchange among the students that have come out for this course. And I also like to st thank uh, uh, Sheikh Ahmed Didat, who has inspired me 
for so many years, once I uh, met him in 1977 when he came to America, but I had read uh, his booklets and heard his uh, audio cassette tapes, and I had became inspired by him as a practical example of this work. I had read books, but to have a practical example before me now was the first experience that I had had in Sheikh Ahmed Didat, and I thank him for having done the type of job that he's done for the last 40 or some odd years, and uh, may Allah bless him to continue on in that manner. Also, I'd like to thank my wife, who's here tonight, for having tolerated uh, my uh, absence at certain times in the household by being in another part of the house and studying and researching and writing and preparing for these classes, especially over the last uh, two months, intensively. But over the last 17 or 18 years that we've been married, for having put up with my long absences uh, from her company that she's entitled to for such a period of time. And I thank her and I thank uh, Allah for having given us as Muslims, Muslim wives of that caliber. Amin. And uh, I'd just like to say again that I thank the brothers, the students who have came out, the students who have sat uh, with me and studied with me. I'm not just uh, so easy uh, to uh, sit under, although the brothers here didn't see none of my harshness. But uh, I thank the brothers for having tolerated, and uh, I'm very pleased with the outcome of this course that we've had. Many of the brothers are not able to come out tonight. Some brothers who have called up and for one reason or the other are not able to come out. But I thank the brothers who have come out and brothers who have come from long distances. This brother back here, Muhammad, comes all the way from Manhattan and goes back late at night, uh, you know, by himself on the subway and never missed a class, always here on time. I thank the... Uh, Allah for these type of brothers, and I hope they will, expire, uh, will inspire themselves, be, be inspired to take this work and go forward with it. And we look forward to the next group of brothers, and at the same time, we want these brothers to come back for our next course and to assist us in training our new students. We want each of you brothers to come back and partake of the training to, uh, to give what you have not learned now to exercise it and give it back to the new students that we expect to have. And we'd like for each one of you to come up to the mic for about two minutes and give some uh, speech, some discourse. Uh, again, I thank you and I thank the establishment here. Subhanahu rabbika rabbil izati amma yasifum. Wassalamu alaikum wa salim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Brother is Brother Saeed A. Alim. Please come forward and take the certificate and take the stage. Please. I'm not much of a speaker, but I hope that through these classes and through my obligation as a propagator of Islam that Allah perfects my speech. But uh, I've known the brother Hamza for over 15 years and he's been in this struggle and his character has been steadfast, you know, and I hope that Allah rewards him and uh, gives him strength to carry on the struggle, inshallah. MashaAllah, JazakAllah. Nara Takbir! Now the next brother is Muhammad Shafiq Ali. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salawatu wa salamu ala Rasulullahi wa ala alihi wa sahabi ajma'in. I'm about. Um, first of all, I'd like to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for making uh, this possible, opening my eyes to this comparative study and seeing the necessity of it throughout the world with the onslaught of Christianity. I'd like to thank all the brothers at Kale Khan and all the staff of Islamic Propagation Center also for making this possible, making the facility possible for us to use so that the brother Hamza Abdul Malik uh, as a, you know, as a tool to allow us to study here. I also want to thank most of all the brother Hamza Abdul Malik that throughout the years that I've known him have, through the grace of Allah, showed me a way to put my energy, my aggressiveness <laughs> in this comparative study and maybe I can take my aggressiveness and use it and bringing our Christian brethren in 
the fold of Islam, inshallah, because Allah says in the Quran, and this is a, a verse that I vibe off a lot after being with Hamza for a while. Allah says, and warn those who say Allah has begotten a son, no knowledge have they. You know, it is indeed a, a wrong thing that they issue out of their mouths. So with this, you know, I like to take the knowledge, inshallah, that I have received from the brother Hamza and the way through Allah and Hamza that, and the Islamic Propagation Center here that they showed me to further this knowledge and being a tool. I like to say one thing to Hamza before I go. Don't slow down, brother, because I'm right behind you. Inshallah. Asalaamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Asalaam Wa Rahmatullah. Next brother is Abdul Rashid Muhammad. Where did it come from? Where did Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I just want to say that uh, our mission just has started and I hope that the outcome uh, of our hard work will be uh, in favor of uh, Islam and the Muslim, uh, inshallah. I want to thank uh, all the brothers around here and the staff and uh, especially Brother Hamza a lot for, uh, you know, uh, spending all the time and making the effort and, you know, and all this hard work, you know, and uh, bring uh, uh, you know, all the brothers, you know, the kind of knowledge, uh, inshallah, and uh, everything will be, inshallah, in the favor of Islam and Muslim. Thank you very much. Now, next brother is Bashiri Abdul Rab. The next brother is Brother Ali Abdul Karim. The next brother is Muhammad Umar Ji. Yes. Thank you. Well, uh, <coughs> Asalaamu As Alaikum. <coughs> See, I'm too filled with emotion, so I don't think I'd be able to speak. But I have to thank this center and Brother Hamza for. Um, you see, I had been grappling with the Christians for a long time, and I knew quite a bit of Christianity and how to deal with the Christians uh, for quite a while. But until I came and attended this uh, class by Brother Hamza, I was not uh, uh, prepared in a systematic way to uh, deal with the onslaught of the Christians. Uh, I, I was born in a, a Buddhist country, and uh, the the Buddhists are different. Here too there are quite a few Buddhists and atheists. So someday I hope there will be some brother who will be able to teach us about Buddhism and uh, how it compares with Islam and how uh, false its uh, teachings are. Of course, just like Christianity, they have some things that are uh, true also, but on the whole, the uh, the religion of uh, the Buddhism is nothing compared to what Islam is, and well, with this I'll close. <laughs> I'm too filled with emotion. May Allah bless uh, Brother Hamza and uh, the people who run this center. Yeah, the next brother is Abdul Qadir Hakim Mustafa. Okay. Brother Abdul Qadir Hakim Mustafa. In Alhamdulillah. One of the things I like to say about thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving us this opportunity to give this da'wah is that knowing something about this comparative religion and having somebody to gear you through how to deal with these people is a big difference. It's like learning Quran and just reading the book but not understanding what you're reading until somebody actually explain to you what they see for me from a different angle. And alhamdulillah, I want to thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Hamza for doing that. Because many times we sat in the class and we would give, he'd ask us, well, what do you think about this? Or what you see in reference to that? I remember one particular thing, he shows a picture about some God 
the Son, and something that's supposed to be the Holy Ghost. And me and you know, brother named Michael Ben Yusuf, we studied with him together, was looking at it and we said, well, this, well, that. He said, okay, give me to me. He said, look, the Father is old. He said, oh yeah, he's old. But we were looking at it and even realized that he was old. And the son is young, but God don't age, and he's not, he was never born, he's not no growing process, he's always constant. And we said, oh wow, look at all of this here. Then he started throwing all the stuff in the end, like, like the thing was dark, and I said, a big light. And all of this stuff just jumped up, and he said, so, wow, look at this here, you know. And one thing he gave was, he said, well, okay, now y'all got to prepare a class, and I'm going to cross-examine. That's one of the hardest things to do. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, you come with all your stuff, I, I mean, I was Mr. Confident. I just know I got him today. Just well, when I left, I was like this side. He said, man, you ain't have enough stuff. He said, look at this here. This ain't so. And I said, wow, man, I just know I got him, you know? So, alhamdulillah, Allah bless us with somebody in Amman or Mr. We be able to go back and teach his people. And also, we doing work with the Spanish-speaking people. I was just called up to Hartford, Connecticut to give some doubt to people. And this means you know, that you know, this book spells Spanish. And the Bible they had was in Spanish. So now I didn't have a Spanish Bible, so I had to like translate the whole thing. It was an interesting experience, but inshallah, the work has to be done on all levels in terms of Allah bless you one particular thing that the brother said. He come from a Buddhist country, then he's trying to deal with those people here. So Allah bless some of us, you know, from Pakistan and all over. We got to do this thing in Urdu, Spanish, whatever language is coming, because these people that have the Bible are sitting a hundred and some different languages. So inshallah we got to inshallah go out there and teach these people what Allah says. Because Allah says in the Quran they say about me which you have no authority to say, no, no, no proof. So inshallah Allah bless us with the proof from people of Amza and you know Ahmadid and these people inshallah. And Allah bless us to continue on doing this good work. Alhamdulillah. Zakhla Kairu. Nare Takbir. Nare Takbir. The next brother is Mikhail Ibn Yusuf. Okay. Next brother is Muhammad Abdul Haq. Assalamu alaikum. Alhamdulillah. I want to thank Brother. Hamza Abdul Malik for a really great class in Dawa. And I only wish that classes like this would be going on in all masjids around the country and around the world so that uh, all Muslims will really know our religion in comparison to the other religions. And hopefully it will also grow to include all these all the other religions as well as Christianity uh, so that in all parts of the world, in all communities, we'll all be able to do this type of work. Thank you. <coughs> so Nare Takbir! Now, I request Brother Kashi Hussain, please come forward and take the diploma. So, so I'd like to thank um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for giving me this opportunity. And then I'd like to thank the Islamic Propagation Center for giving me the opportunity to work with them and Brother Hamza Malik for being so generous and you know and giving me the opportunity to do all this <laughs> technical stuff you know <laughs> alright and salam alaikum alaykum takbir now we have our brother Saeed here and yes, no, you can come up, Brother Saeed. We'll have to write it up for him. We can just present it to him. Oh, okay. Brother Saeed and Brother Muhammad. Uh, we have Brother Saeed here. Uh, Brother Saeed Zafar, please come. Uh, one thing, I see Brother Saeed, I just know, you can come forward. I just noticed, noticed he has a neck brace on tonight, and uh, he, had, he, he had invited us up to his house. Uh, <coughs> to engage in dialogue with some Christian uh, relatives of his, so I hope they didn't gang, him up, gang up on him. <laughs> okay, um, I think this is only for the purposes of record, so I want to go on record. <laughs> um, I don't think that I should have been given this certificate, to tell you very honestly. It has been only a gesture of generosity on your part, 
that you have decided to give us this. Um, I do want to say something about this um, entire experience that I had during these classes. When Brother Hamza was trying to communicate um, with some of um, our friends in my neighborhood by pointing out the most fundamental things that they believe in as valid, that there is no basis of that in Bible. For example, Trinity. There is no basis for that in the Bible. For example, the crucifixion of Jesus. There is no basis for that in the Bible. And when you try to get at the Christians on these points, they will ask you, where are you getting from? This has been the situation for the last 2,000 years, and you're coming and telling us today that there is no basis for that. So it's an eye-opener. It's an eye-opener for me because when I look at the Muslims, they are doing exactly the same thing with the Qur'an. When you go to the Muslim brothers, they will tell you that you recite Durood on Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam whatever number of times during the day or on a Friday, if you recite this surah on that day, if you believe that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was Noor, um, and we have a very strange combination of things to find a way to salvation. And when you go and confront these people, they will say, where are you coming from? They will give you all kinds of titles. And I asked Brother Hamza exactly about that. When the Bible says, according to Jesus, that we, sh everyone should believe in one God, devote himself and herself to that one God and observe the commandment of God. They have forgotten all that part and they believe that the way to salvation is to believe in Jesus and he will come and save you. Similarly, the Muslims are saying that you believe in Muhammad Sallallahu and you find your way to salvation. It's an extremely difficult situation and I think when we are confronting the Christians, we also have to confront ourselves and the Muslims. Without that, there is no way to get the da'wah work done. And I hope and pray that may Allah Jalla Shanahu enable us to understand not only the Bible the way we have learned it in these classes, but also to understand the Qur'an and its message, the way it was presented by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and may we be able to bring this message to the rest of the world, inshallah. Jazakallah. And may Allah bless you and reward you for your efforts. Nare <coughs> Takbir! Before, before calling brother Akhil Khan, this center really appreciate and thankful to the film crew, okay, okay. Uh, uh, film crew, uh, brother uh, Kashif and brother Rashid, who did a a beautiful and tremendous job for this center to record all this evidence to help other Muslim as well as our center. So this center is really appreciated their effort, their work, their timing. Now we have another brother, brother Muhammad, please come forward and have this certificate. Now I recall brother Akhil Khan, sorry, <laughs> oh, brother, I'm sorry. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> In fact, that is how it should have gone. <laughs> I should not be given the chance to <laughs> show up here, number one, and speak here, because uh, I don't think I deserve this, all these things, but still, since I just sometimes try to make effort to gain some of the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to this occasion through Brother Hamza. So maybe for that little effort that I tried to make, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will inshallah bless me and bless everybody else here. Um, I didn't have the chance to participate or attend all the classes. 
I attended some, and from those few classes that I have attended, I have been able to conclude that the whole program of the entire sessions, or all the sessions, are really very, very, very good. One thing what I felt at the time of attending this class is that we the Muslims who are here around to listen to Brother Hamza, in fact we need it because the Christians, they know what they are in their Bible, but unfortunately they don't follow that, even, even if it is not in the intact or in its original form, they don't follow it, but they somehow or other know. But we the Muslims who are born in Islam, particularly who are raised in Islam, didn't have that much opportunity to uh, look around what these other people, I mean the Christians and other people, think. So that was a very good opportunity for me, particularly, I mean as a person, I would say, that I came to know some of the very, very basic things uh, through Brother Hamza. So what I was trying to say is that for future, these kind of programs should be extended and expanded too, not only the Muslims, but also to some others. And for that, it is not Brother Hamza only that he can make efforts to bring all Christians here around. We, all the brothers and sisters who are here, will have to make effort in that direction. Bring them and put our fingers into their eyes, their own eyes, to look at their own things, what they believe in and what they have so far been doing. If we can do that, inshallah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward and bless us all. Once again, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He reward Brother Hamza and all the people who are involved in organizing this program and running this program and also bless all the people who attended this seminars or the class yeah. and may Allah help us in the future to be involved in the true dawah towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to his deen Islam. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, before calling brother Aqil Khan Talk and uh, but before I ask Brother Hamza Abdul Malik to come to the podium and to talk to us, so it will be unfair that without introducing him, rather to give a little glimpse at what he is as a teacher. So I would like to say something before he comes to the podium, and I request him. Uh, Brother Hamza has been in the field of research, in this particular field, comparative study of religions, for the past 18 years. Very few of us know this fact. He has been doing it, just as I said before, for the sake of Allah, to seeking pleasure of Allah, serving the community of Muslims in the best possible way. He is a teacher, and a type of teacher that, which we should be proud of. In him, I find the depth of a teacher, the in-depth knowledge, and at the same time, the attitude of a great teacher. What I mean to say is that, let's see about Socrates. Socrates is supposed to be one of the greatest teachers in Greek, Old Greek. So he was talking to his disciples one day, and he said, I know that I do not know. One of the disciples stood up, he said, you say you don't know? You are a learned person, then what is the difference between you and an illiterate? Then Socrates says, yes, I know that I do not know. He does not know that he does not know. And this is the depth of the teacher that when you talk to him, if he knows, he will say, yes, I know. But even if he knows, 
so he will, he is not, never proud of it. He will tell us very politely what he knows. And second point that I emphasize is the selfless service he is rendering to the Muslim community. He has been offered, but he has refused to accept any monetary gain in any form, honorarium, anything. He is doing just for the sake of Allah. So we all must pray for his health and prosperity, and I will request him to come to the podium and talk to the people. And one thing I will say, that I am not praising him. Praise is to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What I am talking about you is a recognition of fact and our appreciation. Thank you, Brother Khan. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salamu Ala Sayyidil Muslimin Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim Bismillahi r-Rahman r-Rahim Udhu ila sabili rabbika bil hikmah Wa ma'u idatil hasana Wa jadilhum bil latihi ya ahsan Inna rabbaka huwa a'lamu bi mandala an sabilihi Wa huwa a'lamu bil muqtadeen Amma ba'd to my brothers and sisters in Islam and to our honored guests, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm just going to be brief. I'm not going to take up too much time. I think that today you have, up to, up to this point, have seen enough of me standing here. And I do believe that today should be uh, solely to honor our students who have achieved this uh, task of coming out and applying themselves as dil diligently as they have over the last couple of months. So I'll just say a few words, uh, hopefully, inshallah, of encouragement. Uh, for you to continue on in your efforts to uh, achieve success in this field and to go out and do a successful job. Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has inspired me to uh, embark on this course and uh, I thank my brothers in Islam who preceded me in this uh, field, brothers like Sheikh Ahmed Didat who for the last 30, 40 years have been diligently and without uh, uh, slack traveled from one point of the globe to the other in uh, combat in this area. Brothers like Dr. Jamal Badawi and Yusuf Bakas who have inspired me to embark on the same course. I thank these brothers and I hope Allah continue to bless them and cause them success. Uh, I thank the administration here at Masjid of Fatima for providing us with the facility and with the things that were necessary for us to make this course a success. In particular, Brother Akil Khan who as has already been uh, uh, stated is far outgrown this situation now and should be ready to embark on something much more greater and bigger than this for the Muslims. This, te this situation has already been proven and is really outgrowing itself now. We have to move on a bigger level, not for the sake of show, but for demand. Demand has required as such now. So we hope that these things can be achieved in the future, that we can grow and expand. I'd like to say a special thanks to the brothers who have become known as the technicians here. <laughs> these brothers who have uh, come out and put their time in and sacrificed to make sure that a lot of these things, this uh, information that we consider to be valid and, uh, and, and of a great importance has been stored and documented. You see, so that others who are unable to get here from any part of the world, now these tapes have gone out and these classes have gone out into prisons and to other parts of the world and the society, and people are already benefiting from this effort that we have uh, started here. So we thank those brothers. We thank our students who have come out, who came out in inclement weather, who came here on time, brothers who were here from the last class, who have come back again to sit with us, to be a part of this class, to impart their learning and their knowledge and their experiences. We thank all of these brothers, and we hope that they will continue on to further their knowledge and their uh, application in this field. Again, I thank my wife and my family who was just holding, one of the brothers here, my son, was just doing a job. I guess he resigned uh, from that. I thank them and my other son and my daughters over here, my future son-in-law, inshallah. Uh, I thank them for allowing me to take the time that was due them
to uh, put it in this area to help my brothers and sisters in Islam, and they didn't balk at that. Again, I thank them for that kindness. Uh, we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will continue to bless us and bless this effort. And finally, I'd just like to say it's now going to be a chance for me, uh, alhamdulillah, as of Thursday, Saturday, rather, I was contacted by some brothers in uh, Philadelphia to uh, perform, uh, to embark on my first public debate. And inshallah, I'll be debating a professor of Islamic studies at the uh, State University in uh, Pennsylvania on uh, Tuesday at 7 p.m., inshallah, uh, the Bible of the Quran, which is the Word of God. <laughs> and I quoted to you that God Almighty revealed in His Scripture a warning to those who would corrupt His Scripture. He knew that it would be possible to corrupt, so He warned those who would write it, that if you wrote anything corrupted in His Scripture and attributed to Him, that you would be reproved and found out to be a liar. So we said that Paul did it. He wrote, more blessed to give than to receive. It's nowhere in the book of God that Jesus said that. So he has been found out to be a liar like you have improved right now. So he's a liar. He stands right there until I probably leave tonight for you to find that. And I'm ready to, ready to give you a $100 bonus to find it. <laughs> All right. Uh, over here, uh, Bill Saxton with the International Christian Fellowship Ministry. Bill? Thank you. Uh, I just wanted to, to respond to a couple of the uh, cit citations of scripture that you gave. Uh, one was in Romans 3, 7, which, you, uh, which appeared to say that Paul was acknowledging that he was a liar. Let me just quote it and read it in the context, and, it, and this is, uh, someone might argue, someone might argue, if my falsehood enhances God's truthfulness and so increases his glory, why am I still condemned as a sinner? Quote, unquote. Why not say, as we are being slanderously reported as saying, and as some claim that we say, let us do evil that good may result. So Paul there is not claiming that he is a liar, but he is saying, someone may say this, saying, if I lie, it's all, all the more to God's glory, so I should go ahead and do it. Okay? Um, second, a second... Uh, passage you quoted, you, you did quote... Uh, Can I respond to the first one first before you go first? Sure, go ahead. I don't know what scripture you quoted from. I quoted to you from the King James Version of the Bible there. And there it says, and I'll read the passage you said you read before that. What verse did you read from? What? I read in... Uh, read? What verses did you read? Romans 3, 7 and 8. 7 and 8. Here in the King James Version of the Bible it says, For the truth of God has more abounded through my life. And this is a continuation of Romans chapter 1, verse 25, right on down there, where Paul is there speaking about someone who has lied to pervert God's word to make people go away from God, go away from belief in God. And as such, God left them up to all the vile and foul things that they're involved in today. So Paul is now saying if people can do that, to make people go away from God, then I should not be blamed for lying if necessary to make them come back to God. It should be no problem. If they can do it to make them go away, I can do it to make them come back. If you but, read but, but that's not at all the okay. context that he's speaking okay, about. Okay, I'm going to read now to you. Here's what it said. You said verse 7. It says, For if the truth of God has more abounded through my lie unto his glory, why am I also just as a sinner? My lie unto his glory. And, verse 8, it says, And not rather, as we be uh, slanderously reported, and, and that's in brackets, that's not the word, that's not the text, that's not scripture, that's in brackets here. Oh, that's, that's, that's scripture. Oh, no, that's but, but, it's a but, it's a, but it's a parenthetical expression. You know, my friend, that's not yeah. scripture there, okay? So, but I'll read the description. I'll read the description. It says, and not rather as we be slanderously reported in brackets, and as some affirm that we say, let us do evil that good may come, whose damnation is just. It's not a, it's not a slap, Paul is saying here that it's not a perverted situation that, that we're just doing evil that good may come, but Paul is certifying here that if people can come to believe in God, as a result of what has been revert, re referred to before, earlier, the whole scenario that had been given earlier, then this is the end result. Not simply just out of doing evil that good may come. 
But because some people have, have challenged God and perverted his word and made people go away, we have to get on the bandwagon and make them come back. And I showed you, I showed you lies that Paul spoke. You haven't corrected those lies that he spoke, unless you're going to do that now. Uh, you didn't give me an opportunity to yet, did you? Well, I'm giving you right now. Okay. Uh, Go ahead, your next uh, point, Phil. Yeah. Well, one other one, uh, Acts 20, 35. And I'd like to claim the $100 because I don't oh, have a whole lot of money. Uh, you, t you, you referred to the fact that it's, uh, he's quoting from Jesus, uh, as you mentioned, lead red, lead red letters and all. Uh, and uh, yet it's not found in the words of Jesus. Uh, your, your assumption there that you start with is that all the words that Jesus spoke are written in the four Gospels stories as we have them in Scripture. John, John himself makes it very clear that, that uh, all the books of the world could not include all the things that Jesus said and done during his lifetime. In three years of ministry, clearly, uh, we do not have everything that Jesus said. And uh, in fact, many places uh, the Gospel writers make that point. They, they go on and say, Jesus said many other things, preaching and teaching uh, the Word. So. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying you're going to find it in some other place because it's a false assumption that we should assume that we have to be able to find it some other place. No, if, if Paul comes and says... It's not the intention Jesus, of the gospel writers. Here's the, here's the point. If Paul, who never met Jesus, he never met Jesus, and he never seen Jesus in his lifetime. He most surely did. did. Yes. Where did he see him? Yes. No, no, no. He seen a light. He seen a light and was saw no man. Well, then, quote me the scripture, please. Quote me the scripture. Quote me the scripture. Excuse me. We have to hold some water here. Quote me the scripture. If you raise your hand, if you want to respond after the bill is done, do you completed your point on the Acts 20 35. I just wanted to respond again. Okay. Uh, thank you, Bill. The, the point Bill made, just in case anyone didn't hear it, was that never in the Bible does it say that everything that Jesus said is recorded in the Gospels. And therefore, we should not assume that everything that Paul said Jesus said had been said, had been quoted in Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John. Now you're going to respond to that. Let me make one further point on that, and that is the same person who wrote Luke wrote Acts. And as Luke is quoting Paul as he's writing the book of Acts, so also he is quoting Jesus uh, early in the first chapter of the book of Acts, quoting Jesus. Outside of the four Gospels, Luke is quoting them in, in the book of Acts. So Luke, who is writing the Gospel of Luke, and also who is writing in Acts, well, I think we should be able to at least trust some coherence and consistency in, his, uh, in what he's uh, quoting. I, I trust Luke as what he said. Luke never met Jesus. He never met Jesus. And he never claimed, Luke never claimed what he wrote was inspired by God. If you read Luke chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, you'll find that out. If Luke never claimed that his gospel, what he wrote, what is the legend he wrote, was inspired by God. He never claimed it. He said it seemed good to him to write this gospel. No, he, he, he claimed that it was true. He, he never claimed that it was inspired by God, first of all, okay, that it was inspiration. He never met Jesus. He wrote from hearsay, secondhand knowledge. And again, Paul quoted here this scripture, and those people who make Bibles for us and put them in red letters say that where the red letters are, these are the words of Jesus. I'd like to know where those words originally came from if you can't document them to say that they were from Jesus. You can't put both things in the scripture and then say they are from God, they're, they're from Jesus, that they're from John or whoever. You have to certify that these words are there. I said these words are nowhere in the Bible, and you can show me anywhere in any records that they were related, anywhere. That's all I ask. Okay, thank you. Can I make one other point? Uh, Bill, okay. I have to hold on here. <laughs> we can get you together at midnight here. Questions and answers. Let's go to. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will continue to bless us and bless this effort. And finally, I'd just like to say, it's now going to be a chance for me, uh, alhamdulillah, as of Thursday, Saturday, rather, I was contacted by some brothers in uh, Philadelphia to uh, perform, uh, to embark on my first public debate. And inshallah, I'll be debating a professor of Islamic studies at the uh, State University in uh, Pennsylvania on uh, Tuesday at 7 p.m., inshallah, uh, the Bible of the Quran, which is the Word of God. 
So I've been thrust into this position, not, you know, I'm always, as my wife said, you know, you say you're not ready, you're not this, you don't want to do this, and after a while you'll be too old, and then you said I'm too old. So <laughs> now's the time, so we'll get a chance to see what this is, and hopefully we'll be successful, inshallah. Subhanahu wa rabbika rabbil izati amma yasifum, wa salamun ala musaleen, wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Jazakallah khayyam. Brother Pate M. Hegezi. Uh, am I right to yes. spell your name? Hegezi. Hegezi. Oh, I like my name as well. Yeah, please come. I have a strong voice. No, I have a strong voice. You don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. Are you done? Yeah. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Just I ask if I can take the opportunity to just give you a few words. As a Muslim born in Egypt, Alexandria, and I came to this country about 10 years ago. I never saw this kind of activity in Egypt. And I was so impressed and glad that the opportunity come to me and I start to know a lot of you and brother Akil and brother Hamza. Believe me, I was thinking about how some way I can get this information. I start by on myself by reading book from brother Jamal Badawi and so on. But when I hear about this kind of course, I tell myself, it is not only my duty to come here, but it is the duty of every Muslim. We are in a society which is not Islam, the major religion. But it starts to be now our religion or our duty. We have to give this message. And being short, sometime you hear from Sheikh, it is duty first to understand the whole Quran, to memorize it, then go to Dawah. Dawah is not difficult so much. The first thing in Islam, Shahada is La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. And many of us know what means La ilaha illallah, which is the unity and Tawheed. The other part, which is sometimes is more complex, we cannot show our brother and sister from the Quran what means Muhammad Rasulullah. But a kind of study like this will help us to understand and give the right message. And I take this opportunity to give a small gift. I hope that you accept it. A free book, free of charge, from Jamal Badawi. I have few here, and I hope that you accept it. And to get more knowledge, I will, I will suggest that also we can read this kind of book, Muhammad in the Bible, by Professor Ahmed, uh, Abu al-Ahad, which he is a Roman priest who accept Islam in the 1960s and he wrote this book which is very, very, uh, uh, very important book for us as people would like to go out in addition of whatever we get from brother Hamza. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Taha Baruni, <laughs> brother Daris Saleh, <laughs> correct name? Allah, 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 uh, life to it, a person, he is like he give life to the whole nation. 
And anybody who takes the life of one person is like he took the, the life of the whole nation. And the reward for uh, giving life to this, uh, this person, the same amount is going to go to the one who informed him, who teach him. For example, in our case, Hamza. Uh, and uh, this is the thing we should be uh, proud of and be jealous uh, and compete in this uh, field. So, uh, well, 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 well. Uh, make me scared, you know, to talk because I never been in camera before. <laughs> so I'm making dawa. I'm talking with the people. A friend of mine, they're Muslim, but they're telling me you stupid. You are making dawa. They're laughing to me. You make convert people. They're laughing to me. And sometimes I get scared. You know, maybe I'm doing something wrong because the, they're laughing to me. I say you're wasting your time and. Uh, like I talked to the other brother, he be Muslim last time was here, and I working with the other man, he's American. They said, don't go, you're wasting your time. So I get confused what to do, you know. So I need advice from brother Hamza, what should I do, should I carry on? I know this is Dawa, the Allah tell us go to them, who write their own book. And they say this is book from Allah. So I go to them to talk and uh, to show them what is Allah message. But the brethren, they, they put me down, you know. They say, my dad, don't make dawah. They come to my house, the brother, they say, don't do dawah, you have to change the people first. So now I get confused, I don't know, <laughs> you know, I, what to do. So I need advice from the brother who have more knowledge and can guide me better. Uh, brother has raised a question. I think uh, that question will be answered after the session. Uh, I think you better meet brother Hamza. He will give you a good advice. So he has been our teacher. So he, he knows uh, what to do under what circumstances. Uh, I'm sure this brother already knows also because he's already since the duration of this class brought two brothers who have given dawah to who have accepted Islam since that time. <laughs> Uh, brother Ghulam Mustafa. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. I have taken the stand because perhaps I am one of the few persons who have attended this class from Bangladesh. So my country both to be a Muslim majority country, about 90% of them are Muslims. But in spite of that, I cannot very much uh, sure that they are good Muslims, especially the educated class. Mostly the educated people, they just go on in the lifestyle that will become a good citizen and it's okay. They just do not care for that. Some people, some of your people also are full of praises for even the Christian missionaries. Because right from Yugoslavia they're going in the farthest corner of the country and serving the people. So they are, and you have heard the name of Mother Teresa, she's a Yugoslavian, and she goes to Calcutta and, uh, and uh, passing her time in slum areas of Calcutta. So they are just moved by her by her action. So we just do not know what to speak to them. And they are full of praise all the Christian missionaries and Christian activities and their, their charities and all that. Now I equip myself under, by from this lecture which I have attended and of course in my country also I saw some of the videotapes of Hamadida just like Egypt of God or um, um, what's called, um, uh, like that, Israel's God, or say, uh, um, Bible, the Bible, the God's Word. Then I thought, I was discussing, someone saying, saying, he was inspired, saying that if some, some thousand men would have been like Ahmadidat, then perhaps Islam, Islam would have conquered the whole world, because 
if this, this could spread. And I was so feeling, I was so in my that something that was Amad Ida is today is there, but tomorrow he will not be there. Who will replace? So I was feeling a kind of urge within me that how, how this can. But when I have come to this country and I found in uh, what called um, um, Al Alfala in Corona, and I saw this this thing, I said to them all, here is an opportunity for me also to get in touch with these people. I am extremely glad, extremely glad. And I have met with some of the Tablighi people also, uh, but their view also I should rather to express, because my brother has to express uh, some such thing. And they have been saying that change the people first, let us be for good Muslims, and then we can speak our mouth to the non-Muslims. So I said that my view is that, that Allah SWT has not given us that responsibility to change the heart of the people, to change all people and become good Muslims and then change. Because it rests with Allah SWT, whether you are a Muslim or a non-Muslim. Allah Ta'ala has said in the Al-Quran that, Ya Dillahu Guidance is only in His hand. Rasulullah SAW, He has advised Rasulullah SAW, Fazakkir inna ma anta muzakkir lasta alayhim bi musaitiri. You are not a watchdog to over them. Why should you grieve if they don't, if they don't accept your message? Your job is only to pass on the message, convey the message. Whether they accept it, not, not accept it, whether they get, get the guidance, is, is on me, you see. So our duty is to pass on the message. And those people who also tell such a, let us be first of all be, uh, be good Muslim first, I said that it can never be. So, my children, I say with their five terms, I, I pray, even my children, they don't, they are not very particular about their five terms prayer not even about their fasting. So how can I say that all the world over Muslims, they will become good? No. It is quite possible that people like Umar, Umar may come from this America. That's what the Brother Ahmed Dudar has said. Well, leave us out in India, Pakistan or Bangladesh. But maybe so that Islam may spread from this country. From this country. So well, let us pray and hope that this may be possible. This Brother Hamza, I pray for him and that he may get long life and he may yeah. convey this teaching to many, many more people so that many and many, many Ahmadidas may be created out of this country. Salaam okay. Alaikum. Uh, brother Abdul Baki Hamid. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to say that sometimes I, I was wondering, did I really earn this because of my attendance record? You know, um, in school, in public school, if you're absent a couple of times, you, it can affect your uh, grades. And thank Allah for uh, the videos that I was able to study at home and alhamdulillah. I also want to say that I was able to bring these videos into the prison. I work in the prison department of corrections. And for the brothers in prison who are actually studying uh, Dawa, the prison is a vast uh, Dawa area where we can, we can do a lot of work yeah. there in that area. Yeah. The brothers are there. They're just waiting for the message. Yeah. So I introduced these tapes, some of these tapes, uh, to the brothers. And it was very receptive, warm reception, you know. So inshallah. We hope that in the very near future they'll be coming into most of the prisons and uh, spreading this word. Uh, pray, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Brother Abdul Hassan Hussain. <laughs> I would like to first take this occasion to uh, voice my own uh, deepest appreciation to our brother teacher, Hans Abdul Malik. I would also hope that uh, these classes would be expanded not only to 
convey to learn the special skills that are useful and very necessary in conveying the message of Islam to Christian missionaries, but also the skills necessary in conveying the message of Islam to people who, have, who may or may not be deeply involved in Christianity or any religion for that matter. I'm especially grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have been able to have been graced to be a student of an African-American Muslim teacher emphasizing the expression of emphasizing the clarification of the teachings of the Bible which uh, still I'm a little kind of hold up here a little bit my main point uh, to be brief is that I hope that um, the brothers who have attended the class, my fellow brothers and uh, students, will uh, go on further to advance their studies and take an interest in conveying this message of Islam and uh, to conveying this message of Islam to our brothers and sisters, especially in the African American and Hispanic communities uh, who are being uh, ravaged by the monster of drugs. <coughs> because we are being challenged today. I don't see this class, I know my own intentions in coming to this class was not just to uh, gain these skills for the purpose of debating with Christian missionaries, which I may or may not ever have that particular occasion to do, but as an overall sharpening of my skills in propagating Islam to the non-Muslim community, especially our youth, who on the outsides of these mosques are being destroyed daily. If this class or and many classes like it are divorced or don't feel any compassion in their hearts for the youth of the major cities throughout this country who need this religion of Islam. And especially I'm happy to hear that there is a brother who is involved with the prison system where those who have already been uh, incarcerated in these facilities, then even this would be something of a mockery. And finally, we know that we are being challenged, Islam is being challenged internationally. This book by Salman Rushdie is not an isolated attack on the religion of Islam. And those of us who are attending these type of classes, we should be keen in the preparing ourselves to intellectually confront these challenges, such as uh, this book written by Salman Rushdie, as well as all other challenges that uh, we are certain to meet in the coming days. Wa alaykum as my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu Alaikum. On behalf of Islamic Propagation Center of New York, I welcome you all and appreciate your presence at tonight's program. We all together, from the bottom of our hearts, welcome the Honorable Chief Guest, Brother Sheikh Ahmed Dida, who traveled from South Africa to North America on our invitation. Brother, Brother Ahmed Dita, through your unique techniques of debating and excellent style of lecturing, you have given a new dimension to the program of Islamic propagation. The entire Muslim Ummah admires you, loves you, and holds you in high regard. May Allah give you high reward in this world and in the hereafter. Amen. Brother Ahmad Dita, you will be delighted to know that your brilliant student, Brother Hamza Abdul Malik, has been following your approach in the propagation of Islam in this United States. Last summer, 
he had a very successful debate at Pennsylvania University and inshallah he will be having more and he will be successful. Brother Dida, you have created a space for new da'is. You have given a new inspiration to these da'is to communicate the message of Islam to the entire mankind in the contemporary world. Your beloved student, Brother Hamza Abdul Malik, has been doing this job excellently. He has been teaching Islam, he has been teaching comparative religion classes at Masjid Al Fatima for the past two years. The Islamic Propagation Center of New York has been paying him nothing, no cash, no kind. The reward for his services lies with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Allah Allah Taala fir Quran Kareem, Fatima Allah Sawab Al Dunya Wa Husna Sawab Al Aakhir. Wallahu yuhibbul musini The reward for good people who are doing good lies with Allah. Reward in this world and excellent reward in the hereafter. Now I strongly feel that the new generation of Da'is is very much anxious or rather eager to have their graduation certificates at the same time to receive the inspirational message from Sheikh Ahmad Tida. So I will not like to stay here more, but before I leave the floor, I would like to congratulate all those who graduated from our center this year and in previous years. I also thank the chief guest, Brother Tida, and his close associate, Brother Saleh Muhammad, who is sitting behind him, beside him, for making this program a momentous and a memorable event. May Allah guide us and help us in following Islam according to the prescription given in Holy Quran and according to the tradition of Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. May Allah give us tawfiq to communicate the message of Islam to the entire mankind. Amin. Now with this brief introduction, I would request Brother Hamza to come and talk to you. Thank you, Brother. Scholar, Sheikh Akhla Didat, but also 
one who has no claim to scholarly attainment has been included in, in the invitation to stand before you tonight, that one being yours truly. That we have been summoned here tonight on this most auspicious occasion argues well for its success now and its, its impact in the future, inshallah. There could be no better application for a person than to call men to a law's way and to conform his or her conduct to the teachings that he or she preaches to others and to submit themselves entirely to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the essence of Islam. Uh, I have been thinking about what to say to our students. They've seen me so many hours standing before them in our classrooms. And uh, I was thinking tonight, since we have our great scholar, Sheikh Ahmedida, here with us, what should be my talk tonight? Uh, and alhamdulillah that during the past week an incident occurred that I think would say it all once I conveyed it. I think it will deliver just what I could probably uh, like to say, what I would like to say to my students and to our guests tonight. While uh, I had went, my wife and I had went up to the school on this day that they call Halloween here in New York. Uh, I had went up to pick up my kids from school early that evening because of the uh, uh, behavior of some of the school kids on this particular day after school. So to keep my kids from being bothered or even bothering other people for that matter, I said, well, let's go get the kids out of school early and, and wait for them and bring them home rather than let them take public transportation. So my wife and I, while we were waiting in front of the school there, uh, this is a junior high school here in Queens, New York, in Queens, and while we were parked there, sitting in my uh, van, which has tinted windows that you can't really see in there, uh, there were some teenagers on the corner in front of the school peddling, selling X-rated movies. X-rated movies to the uh, students as they came out of school, X-rated movies. And uh, one of them, seeing the van pull up, and so they walked up to the van to present one to whoever they felt was sitting in the passenger side of the van. They wanted to see if you want to get interested in buying one of these X-rated movies. And not being able to see through the window, they didn't know who they were talking to, so they presented it. And as he didn't get any response, he moved on a little further in front of the van. At that point, you could see through the clear window the windshield portion. And so now this individual happened to see uh, myself sitting on the driver's side with a white, what we call a kufi, on a white headdress, white headdress. And right away, he recognized his mistake. He knew that he was peddling his wares uh, in a condition that they, were not, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't be accepted. And he, re he realized that he had made a mistake. So right away, this individual went to his buddy, to his partner, and told him immediately what he had done. The big mistake that he, you could see the expression what he had done and what mistake he had made by trying to sell X-rated movies to Muslim, or to Muslims. And the friend, the friend approached the van and began to make apologies for his buddy. He began to apologize. No one said anything, nothing at all. This is just spontaneous action uh, occurred. He began to apologize for the mistake and for the intrusion of his friend, and they walked away. Not only that, but they left the area altogether now. They just left the whole area altogether. So that impressed me, and it gave me a good idea now, in terms of giving doubt. When we talk about inviting and calling people to the way of Allah, 
that given Dawa is more than just uh, becoming scholarly, uh, having a lot of uh, good words to say to people, but also our conduct. Our conduct as Muslims play a great role in giving doubt. And we'd be surprised now that by identifying ourselves, and my point is this, and I don't mean to, by the statements that I'm going to make, uh, belittle anybody or embarrass anybody. I just simply want to say, particularly to those students who engage in uh, Dawa training, that they want to make themselves uh, uh, examples of people who invite to the way of Allah. That these Muslims, men and women, should in their conduct display uh, the character of the Dawa or the message that they would like to invite to. Also, keeping that in mind, a verse from the Quran uh, in chapter Surah 33 of the Quran, uh, verse 59, there it says in the translation, O Prophet, tell thy wives and the daughters and the believing women that they should cast their outer garments over their person when abroad. <coughs> that is most convenient that they should be known as such, meaning as believing women, and not be molested. And Allah is often forgiving, most merciful. Two points come to mind in this verse, and that is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is instructing the Prophet وسلم, that he enjoined upon his wives and the believing women that when they go out abroad, venture out of their per, uh, private domain, that they conduct themselves in a certain manner, that they dress in a certain manner for two reasons, main reasons, and that is that they not be given trouble, they not be molested, they not be harassed in the society because they're not displaying their uh, beauty, flaunting their beauty, so that therefore they're not given trouble and also that they can be recognized, recognized as believing women. And this is my point, the point of being recognized in the society, that we as Muslim men and women, we can give dawah by being recognized, by being recognized as believing men and women. It's just like the police officer. The police officer, unless he's got some undercover work that he's trying to do, he's recognized. So when you see the police officer approaching, he's recognized, he identifies himself, and right away, you want to escape from whatever it is that you're plotting or planning to do. Uh, the fireman, when he comes out to do his job, he's recognized. The doctor, when he approaches you in the office, he's recognized. And so therefore, it's a good practice of us as Muslims to have some identification, uh, especially in our clothing, in our dress. We got, and I'm not in, uh, saying that there's any particular manner of dress now, particularly for men. The women's position in Islam is known. But for us brothers in Islam, that we, especially in a society like uh, the West, in America, that we should identify ourselves, that we can be known, that our brothers can know uh, each other, and then at the same time, others can know and perhaps inquire of us, why did you wear this? Who are you? What are you? What is your religion? And this gives us a chance to enter into a dialogue. I just hope that by relating that particular incident, I'm sure many of you have uh, similar inc incidents that you could refer to, that this would inspire you in that area. And uh, before I close, I don't want to speak too much, but before finishing, I would consider it uh, my pleasure and my duty on behalf of the IPCI and on behalf of the students of the IPCI, the Islamic Propagation Center International, uh, that we thank our beloved brother, Sheikh Ahmed our, be our beloved brother and teacher, Sheikh Ahmed Didat. We all are most grateful to you that you have very graciously come here to be with us tonight. And the fact that you have been kind enough to interrupt your busy schedule to come here shows the importance that you attach to this work that we're doing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you 
and bless all of us who strive in his cause, and that he gives us victory over the non-belief. Just like Allah Now, with these messages, uh, I will call the names of our graduates who have graduated from our classes at Masjid Al Fatima this year, and the brother and our sister, the recipient, will come uh, take the uh, the certificate and. He or she will be given two minutes time if he or she has to speak on any issue, just a small talk. Uh, but before that, I would like to ask you if you like, if you like to ask any questions from Sheikh Ahmad Dida. And the questions should be around the topic that what is the meaning and the significance and importance of the study of comparative religion. He has already given his message, but still, if somebody has a question, so please ask. So the person who wants to ask the question will come to this mic, and brother Dita, I will not give him a moderation to come here. He will answer your questions from that mic. Uh, I have read many books written by you, and uh, I, I saw that uh, you use uh, some quotations from the Bible. Uh, I'm curious about it that uh, uh, we Muslims believe that they are changing the Bible every every day, and they are still doing it. They are changing the Bible. So, what is the point? Uh, how can we use it? It means if we use the uh, quotations from Bible, it gives a uh, I mean uh, that we believe in the Bible. We, we do believe in the Bible, the book, that is a divine scripture from God. But how can we use uh, the quotations because we don't know what, uh, what things they have changed, but they change it. How can we use it? See, every quotation I give you in my book, you'll find them in every Bible. So, you are a good wicket. See, when I quoted you, Matthew 12, chapter 12, verse 39, 38, 39, 40, every Bible, there might be variation of words, but it's the same, the message is the same, so you can do the job. This is the weapon that Allah has given you to use. You see, Allah tells you when they say, they make any claim, وَقَالُوا they say, لَمْ يَدْخُلَ الْجَنَّةِ إِلَّا مَنْ كَانَ هُدًا وَنَسَارًا So they say that you Muslims will never, never enter Jannah unless you become a Jew or unless you become a Christian. So Allah tells you an answer to that, we didn't have to go, we didn't go in the talk. He says, تِلْكَ أَمَانِيُّهُمْ that this is the wishful thinking, vain desires, hallucination. Qul, tell them how to do that. Produce your proof. Qul, say how to do that. Produce your proof in Kuntum Swati. King, if you are speaking the truth, let us have a look at your authority. So the guy produced the authority in 2000 different languages, his Bible. He said, my Bible says this, my Bible says that. My Bible says this, my Bible says that. It's alright. Let's have a look at your Bible. So you are forced to. What does it say? And it doesn't say what he's thinking. There we prove it. He says that Christ died, but Christ said he will be like Jonah. His Bible. We are proving your case from his Bible. Yes, you see? So if you can do that, there is no better way. Because you say, look, my Quran says this. Wama katalu, wama salabu. He said, where did the Quran come from? Yes. He said, no, it was revealed to Muhammad. He said, I don't believe in it. Now what? Why? He said, I don't believe this is the false. This is a copy. Plagiarism. Like Muhammad copied it. So all oh, this what for? He said, hey, come back. Let's see what your book says. Look, you haven't understood your own language. Simple, basic English you don't understand. And these are giants of literature. And you can challenge them and say, look, man, read this. For as Jonah, like, for as Jonah was, so shall the son of man be. Like Jonah. You understand English? He said, yes. He's a DD, doctor of divinity. <laughs> he understands English. He said, for as Jonah was, like Jonah, is this like Jonah or unlike Jonah? Little children like you can go to know. Is this like or unlike in your language? It's Look, you're proving your case. You ask him, is this like in your language? Like or unlike? He says, unlike. He says, well, there's the answer. You are telling me that your, your God is alive. 
You are speaking the truth and your God is a liar. What kind of religion is this you got? So it's an easy idea. Thank you. First is, um, what Nabi Isa is not ever put on the cross and about what the Bible says about him producing the proof by saying, touch me, feel on um, um, flesh. Did this ever come to happen? Yeah, the verse that you have just alluded to is in the Bible. And we've been dealing with, with this problem according to what I just explained in the previous question. Allah says, Kul haatu burhan. Produce your proof. Asking the enemy, the opposition, is making certain claims, Christ died, your book says, Wama khatunu, Wama salabu, I don't accept your book, my book says this. So they say, look, Allah says, asking for his proof. So he produced it. So now we are reasoning with him according to his proof. When he says, Jesus says, you know, when he came to the top of the room, he said, Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself, and will be and see, for the spirit has no flesh and bones, as we see here. So we are asking, what is he trying to prove? See, our, our problem is, did he or did he die? If he died, Christianity is based on the death and resurrection of Jesus. As I told you, the first of all, Corinthians, that if Christ is not risen from the dead, that if he didn't die, he didn't wake up, there is no Christianity. That's all. So that means there is nothing left. Prove that from his own book. That's what we are proving. That the man says, I am the same fellow man. What's wrong with you? Handle me and see. I'm not a spirit. I'm not a ghost. I'm not a spook. I'm not a resurrected body. I'm not a translated body. I'm not a metamorphosed body. I'm the same fellow man. Look at me. So it disproves that the whole religion. So if the whole religion falls, then you do your job. You explain to him what true religion is. One more question. Now I request uh, Brother Hamza Abdul Malik to help Brother Ahmad Ida in the distribution of certificates. So I am calling the names. Please come forward, receive your certificate, and if you have to say something. You can just communicate the message in two minutes because uh, the time is very limited. Thank you. Uh, Brother Abdul Haq. Brother Abdul Haq. Who in 
advise people to Allah and do good deeds and say boastfully, I am a Muslim. So may Allah bless us all, including Brother Hamza, Brother Ahmed Didad, and especially the students of Brother Hamza to do the job, to invite people with excellent words to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amen. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Muslimin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sahbihi wa sahbihi I'd like to take this time to thank the IPC Center, IPCI. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Brother Akhmadida here, who is our forerunner, pioneer in this field of comparative study. Without him, a lot of things couldn't be possible, initiative, spirit. Most of all, I'd like to thank the Brother Hamza Abdul Malik, who has been my tutor for a number of years. And uh, he has not only assisted me in this field of comparative study, he has also assisted me in other areas of my Islam and my growth. And I reflect on this, dear Lord, wisdom and goodly exhortation, and argue with them in the best manner. Allah has also enjoined on us in the Quran, in Surah Kaf, He says, and warn those who say Allah has begotten a son. So with this instruction in the Quran and our duty as Muslims, we must devise a plan using Quran as premises to establish a methodology in delivering this message to our Christian brethren. Because if we don't, if we don't give the dawah, if we don't deliver the message, what's not used, waste away. We become like a piece of bread. If you ever sat a piece of bread on the counter, after a while it dries up and withers away. And we as Muslims, in order to regenerate, revive, and group and receive the blessings of Allah, we must follow the instructions as He has issued out in the Quran. A few years ago, a few years ago, I uh, myself was content with going to Juma, going to work, and making Salah. And through these brothers here that who took the time, took the dedication, and took the patience to teach this class, I have learned the importance of giving down. So with this, I'd like to say thank you to all, first of all to Allah, and thank you to for all that have made it possible for me to acquire this knowledge. And thank you all for attending this graduation. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Mustafa Asad Abdullah Muhammad. Brother Zaharullah. Brother Bashiri Abdul Rab. I just want to say something very quickly uh, that uh, I have taken this course and I learned a lot from it and I still have a lot to learn but I feel that many people right I'm not they don't agree with this methodology like they say well we shouldn't even bother to use the Quran if that's the case I mean use the, the Bible but if that's the case those that you feel that those that feel that you shouldn't use the Bible, then use the Quran. Islam. Brother Kashiful Haq. Brother Sayyid A. Abdul Ali. Brother Hassan Suleiman. Brother Muhammad Mendez. Brother Muhammad Umarji, Brother Fateh 
ठीक है जी ब्रादर समीर जी खान
now I thank you again for joining us and making this program a success. So before we leave, I will say this to you. Rabbana la tazat kulubana baada is hadaytana wa hablana millatun karama inna ka antal baha. Allah Hafiz.